G'day, this is Scotty Tucker. I'm trying to educate you guys here in Australia about the benefits of what we do, which is help improve private water bodies. So our goal in this series is to give you information and education so that you can help better manage your own water bodies and turn them into really nice, attractive dams like what you can see behind me. Today's uh, session, I just want to have a quick chat about aeration. So aeration is probably the most important thing that you can do to improve the water quality in a dam such as this. And there are several reasons why. Um, first of all, the aeration in a dam, uh, you just sort of think about Mother Nature, just think about where you see aeration in nature. And uh, where that is, is normally in, in sort of fast flowing rivers, uh, might be up in the mountains where you've got um, uh, cool water travelling down a, uh, a stream bed, lots of rivers in there and the water is normally crystal clear. Uh, same sort of river system, if it ends up flowing down then through uh, different parts of the river and into still stagnant um, swampy billabongs or uh, marsh areas or just still stagnant water bodies, that's when you generally end up with, uh, with problems like algae and odour. And uh, that's essentially what we had with this dam here behind us when we first started with it. It was uh, riddled with blue-green algae, it was uh, floating all through the dam, causing issues for the, for the livestock, for the horses that, uh, that were being watered from, this, uh, from the dam. So uh, we got involved here and we stuck in a, a windmill powered aeration system and also a solar aeration system. But uh, it's not the purpose of these videos, the purpose of this video is just to explain aeration uh, as a, an overall concept. The reason why I said let's go back to nature and have a look is that one of the things with aeration is that it's not actually the air in the water that is uh, the main driving force with, with doing the cleansing process, so to speak, when it comes to water. The real workhorse is a bacteria, a beneficial bacteria. So it's kind of like this, a similar sort of process that goes on in, say, a wastewater treatment plant. We're using oxygen and bacteria to clean up crap. And the crap in dams is normally coming from, from nutrient load, from duck crap, from organic material that blows in. And what happens over time is that this organic material builds up a sludge and a waste down the bottom. Uh, that acts as a sort of a, a compost, uh, nutrient rich compost for, for algae and weeds to grow and to thrive. So what you're doing with, uh, with aeration is that uh, in, in sort of un, untreated or unaerated water, you'll end up with what's called a thermocline. Those of you that know that when you jump into a dam like this one, it's warm on the top and cold down the bottom. Well, the same thing happens with oxygen. So you get all your oxygen up the top and then very little or none down the bottom. And why that's important is that when you've got little or no oxygen down the bottom, you have species of bacteria that dominate that are anaerobic species. Anaerobic species will digest that nutrient-rich organic load down the bottom, but they do it really, really slowly. Uh, and uh, another side, side note to that is that anaerobic species generally produce or do produce hydrogen sulfide and methane as a byproduct of their digestion process and that's what causes dams to smell like rotten eggs. If you walk out into a dam and you've got uh, thick sort of sludge that pops up when you're walking around and it stinks, it's not the water, it's actually the, the species of bacteria that are in there. So generally in man-made water bodies that aren't aerated, that just builds up over time and you end up with a bigger, thicker sludge layer. All of a sudden you might just have 10 years of no issue or five years or two years however long and then all of a sudden just bang uh, something happens and all the weed starts growing and the algae starts coming along and you just we always get these phone calls oh, i've had this dam for 10 years nothing's gone wrong with it now all of a sudden this year it's just turned and i've got problems it stinks i've got algae i've got weed and what that means is that the dam's reached its tipping point so it's no longer able to naturally process or dilute or flush out the nutrients that are coming in there so the internal nutrient load just causes all sorts of crazy stuff to happen in terms of growth of things that you don't want growing in there what you're trying to do with aeration is change the populations of bacteria from anaerobic to aerobic and most importantly get that oxygen down the bottom where it's needed the most. And what happens then is that the aerobic species of bacteria, they digest the waste a lot faster. So you're able to start uh, getting rid of that sludge rather than letting it accumu accumulate. And by increasing the numbers of beneficial bacteria that are aerobic, that means that you're out, they, they feed off the nutrient and you're able to outcompete the algae in the weed for the available nutrients. 
So when it comes to nutrient reduction and, and slowing or stopping algae and weed growth, aeration itself doesn't actually do it. It's a tool or a vehicle to increase the numbers of, of aerobic species of bacteria that will do that for you. So coming back to that example of Mother Nature, that's the difference where, where you've got fast flowing, highly oxygenated, cold water flowing down a, a, a pebbled stream, chances are it's, it's going to be pretty clean and clear and healthy. Whereas the water at the other end where it might be still and stagnant and sitting around and there's a stratified layer and no oxygen in the bottom, that's when you can run into issues with, uh, with, with algae and weed. Blue-green algae, uh, the, the, the toxic one, uh, it can be controlled with aeration because it doesn't like being circulated, it doesn't like go, getting moved around the pond. That type of algae can, it's actually a bacteria, it's a cyanobacteria, but we just call it blue-green algae. Uh, but that sort, sort of uh, bacteria or algae can actually self-regulate its buoyancy. So it can come up and down and travel up and down in the, the, the water column, grab nutrients, grab oxygen, grab sunlight, do whatever it wants to do. And so that means that it outcompetes other species of algae. So what happens when you aerate the water and start not letting the blue-green algae uh, outcompete the, the other species of algae because the blue-green loses its competitiveness uh, by losing its ability to self-regulate its buoyancy, that's when you end up with different species of algae and you just get rid of blue-green algae and, and generally more green sort of algae, algae planktonic algae that's non-harmful comes along to take its place. So aeration is very, very good in that regard. Uh, other things aeration will do is on that uh, on that sludge layer down the bottom, it will actually put a, a like a if you like a cap over the top of it, which acts as a, a barrier between the sediment uh, and the water. And whereas otherwise, without that cap, the nutrient can just quite freely travel up and down um, at certain times of the year. But when you have a cap over the top of it, it slows that nutrient uh, down, so it again reduces the amount of nutrient that's able to uh, to feed the, the algae and weed above the uh, above the sediment layer. So they're the, the main reasons for aeration and, and, and why we use it in dams like this. There are many other reasons to use aeration in different dams and different systems, in wastewater systems. It's, it's somewhat different. Uh, process is similar but, uh, and the principles are similar, but it's a bit more intensive aeration is required. Uh, when it comes to fish in dams, if you're having fish in a, uh, an aerated dam, it means that the fish are able to go all the way down to the bottom because oxygen's all the way down at the bottom. In dams where you've got that stratified layer and you've only got air up the top or oxygen up the top, it means that the fish generally hang around up the top and that makes them easy targets for birds. So by getting air, air into the water or oxygen into the water, you open up the habitat for the fish, you give them much more uh, area in which to, uh, to thrive and also to protect themselves. So uh, aeration in dams, it's undoubtedly the, the best short, mid and long term investment you can make in terms of improving your water quality. So get yourself an aerator, you'll love it. And if you've got any questions to ask about aeration or any other topic to do with dams and water bodies and ponds and wastewater and whatever it is that you want to know, any sort of problems at all, send us an email, check out the links below, pop a question in the comments section and we'd love to answer them for you. Thanks a lot.